You're listening to the Goldway Gamer on Flirt FM 101.3. My name is Owen Murphy and I am the Goldway Gamer. And today we have something very, very interesting lined up for you because I have not one, but two guests joining me on the line. And, well, best way to put this is today I am among gods because I have two gentlemen who are both well-known for being Mortal Kombat Lord Raiden. First off, I have uh, returning to the mic and returning to the show, Mr. Carlos One Take Piscina, um, <laughs> who was the mocap artist and the digital actor of, for Raiden back in the classic Mortal Kombat days. Uh, Carlos, thank you so much for joining me on the mic today. Hey, thank you. I really appreciate it. And it's an honor to be here with Richard. It is fantastic to have you here again. It genuinely is. And Thank the you. flip side then is indeed Richard. Richard Epcar, who is the voice of... Wow. Well, we know he's the voice of Raiden, but he is also the voice of pretty much everybody else you've ever heard. Um, his resume goes into TV and movies, the likes of Power Rangers, Digimon, Transformers, Ninja Scrolls, if we're talking video games which we are, we'll be talking World of Warcraft, Pokemon Masters, Kingdom Hearts, Dynasty Warriors, Skyrim, the list goes on. And of course, he is the voice of Lord Raiden from Mortal Kombat, Mr. Mr. Richard Epcar. Richard, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Thank you, Owen. Thank you for having me. And and, and it is my honor and privilege and uh, to be here with Carlos. Carlos is the, uh, you know, he's the... Uh, the original goat. He's he's he is the original Raiden. So it's quite an honor for me to be here Thank with uh, with Carlos. Absolutely. And you gentlemen haven't actually uh, met prior to this, have you? Mm-hmm. No, no, we, we haven't. haven't. Yeah, I've Which heard all kinds because... of stories. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, good ones. All good ones, yes. All all good ones. But yeah, no, I've I've been uh, I've been looking forward to this because I've been wanting to meet you uh, for for the entire time I've been doing uh, the voice of Raiden. I always wanted to meet meet you. So so it's uh, it's an honor for me, my friend, to meet you. Thank you. Same here. I mean, I, we hear you in the motion capture studio with the uh, the playback, and it's just you know, it, it, it's like I know you. Ah, thank you. You don't say turn that guy off already. I'm sick of hearing him. <laughs> no, never, never. We, uh, you, you were one of the few that um, you know. And, and once again, this is not to offend anybody. One of the few that we were like, man, we could just listen to this silky voice all day. Ah, oh, oh, thank you. That's very kind. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank no, you. Thank this you. is incredible. It's incredible the fact that you guys ha- know each other so well even though you haven't met it's like sitting here it's still like sitting here with two brothers it's yeah. absolutely incredible <laughs> so i'll tell you what let's start off with your good self then richard um yes you got in we into the mortal Kombat universe in mk mk versus dcu which was the crossover with uh the dc universe and you voiced yeah. both the joker and raiden in that tell me what did you know about Mortal Kombat and about Raiden prior to that gig? Well, you know, here's something that's kind of interesting uh, that a lot of people don't know, that I actually did some voice work on the original uh, Mortal Kombat movie. And, Get out! Uh, yeah, and so and Ed Boon did as well. So uh, it was kind of funny. We, we did some voice work together on that movie way before any of this other stuff. I've always... Uh, I've always been aware of Mortal Kombat. I've always loved Mortal Kombat. Uh, I got a call one day from a, a lovely casting director, Bridget Burdeen, who sadly is no longer with us, but uh, she was a lovely person and uh, called me in to, basically they, they had uh, Warner Brothers on the line, they had NetherRealm Studios on the line, and they had DC Comics on the line. And she said, Richard, they want you to audition for all the DC characters and for all the Mortal Kombat characters. Well, you know, the the two that really stuck out in my mind were Raiden and the Joker. Those were two that I did that I thought, wow, I, I would love to do those those characters, you know. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, she she asked me, 
before I left, she said, who would you like to do? And I said, those two characters. And, and uh, Carlos knows this. They, they never ask you who you want to do. They don't care who you want to do. They're going to cast oh, yeah. you the way, the way they want to cast you. Um, but I said uh, Raiden and the Joker. And, and sure enough, a couple days later, they called me and booked me for both those parts. And I had been doing both of those characters since then for, I don't know how many, six, seven games, I guess, right so far. And uh, mm-hmm. love them both very much. Amazing, amazing. Then you mentioned there that um, uh, they never ask you who you want to play. They kind of tell you what the role is. So I'll switch that over to uh, Carlos because you were the original on the screen Raiden. Now, just how much, um, but how much of a say did you have in the look and presentation of this character, or was it a case of you being provided the character and being told what to do? Well, that, that that's pretty early on in in production for for game development. Where um, at Midway, the uh, the the game designers and developers had the freedom to, uh, you know, more or less define those character roles. And since they were a new IP, it, it it's a little different when it's new and you get somebody in and you collaborate with John Tobias. He created the characters. Mm-hmm. He asked me to, you know, he. he he more or less shopped there, not shopped around, but you know, a group of friends got together to make this video game and he shopped around like within us, which character we would like to do. And he asked me if I would like to do Raiden. I said, absolutely. So we kind of like collaborated on, you know, the look, the feel, you know, and, and more or less, I just played myself when I was doing Raiden to an extent, but also uh, drawing from, you know, big trouble in little China, martial arts movies. And, uh, you know, just started from there where it was like to find this character and then eventually, you know, get into game development and, and work on the Mortal Kombat team to define everybody else. But I did some of the voice call. I'm, I'm not an expert on that. You know, I'm not a, a voice actor. And, and that's why we have people like Richard who actually bring that like extra uh extra definition of character and extra life to the character you know because everybody knew Raiden a certain way and I I feel that when Richard Mm -hmm. took over other than you know you got Christopher Lambert he's a great actor you know he's got that voice but I think Richard actually defined you know the voice of Raiden very godly uh we did a special forces game and we used somebody else's voice and kind of is that low grumbly sound and, and Richard can, uh, you know, he could, he's got a wide range of, of, you know, from what you just mentioned, Raiden to Joker. Those are two distinctly different uh, voice acting categories. And, and Richard's just able to, you know, instantly go from one to the other. And I feel like that, that bought a more godly presence to Raiden in the newer games. Well, thank you, Carlos. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, Carlos, you um, you did dabble here and there in voice acting yourself. Um, you you are the voice of Bo Wright Joe. Um, would you have pushed yourself forward um, further into voice acting? No, I, I I think that's one of my weak spots. You know, you you really have to. I, I have a distinctly somewhat high voice every now and then and low voice and you know at the time when we did all those voiceovers for the uh mk5 through 7 it was more or less not cutting corners but you know we were still a smaller company and uh, unlike you know we weren't like wb they're they're a triple a studio you Mm -hmm. know and they're able to 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 you know uh, more or less get the talent that they need and want and Richard can attest to that working with smaller projects, you still give your 100%, but you know, when they want a professional person, uh, I, I think it's better that they get somebody of a higher quality than myself. Cause I, I'm, you know, I, I'll just do mocap and the rest. And then Richard could use his silky smooth voice and make <laughs> me look great. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I think you have a very nice voice, Carlos. I don't see any reason Thank why you could do a voiceover. Yeah, I appreciate it. Of course. Richard, have you heard Carlos as a uh, Bo Wright Joe in the classics? 
I don't think I have, to be honest with you. I, I sadly, I, I haven't uh, heard a lot of the uh, the games before MK versus uh, DC. So, uh, you know, um, it's a, it's a sad uh, part of my my work that I'm so busy that I, I oftentimes don't get to hear myself and stuff. So I, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's hard it's hard to <laughs> hear other people do stuff. But uh, yeah, I would love to. I, I'd love to go back and hear some of that stuff. Uh, were you were you the one who created that thing that when he's flying across when Raiden is flying across and he does that weird sound? Are you the one that, that did that, Carlos? Originally? No, originally that was uh, Dan Forden and uh, Ed. They came up with a couple sound calls, uh, but that does the origin does stem from uh, me crushing my uh, genitals on a. <laughs> on a set of stairs yeah it's pretty funny Yikes. Uh, we were doing the we were doing the superman move and uh you know i was uh over enthusiastic and we were using a set of stairs to like lay down you know so you do this yeah and then you just cut the frames out so it looks like you know because it's flying, back yeah. in the day when you're yeah when you're flying rotoscoping and uh you know i smashed my nuts and i you know i oh, did a little like squeaky sound and you know got up and you still got to keep filming uh, yeah. no matter what mistakes you made and uh i think that you know we started joking about certain things and i think that's where i'd like to think it stemmed from but you know <laughs> maybe maybe they already had an idea more or less to to you know make a sound call oh well, i hope I, you're you're okay from that <laughs> yeah yeah two kids later i'm good uh, okay good see that's the one thing about <laughs> voice acting you don't have to worry about your nuts getting squashed so that's one thing <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I did not see this conversation going this way. No. We're, we're into it for five minutes. We're already in the toilet, right? Yeah. It's just... Well, I'll tell you what, Richard, let's talk about um, the start of Mortal Kombat uh, 2011 or Mortal Kombat 9, as it's known, uh, known by fans. And it opens up with Raiden at the end of the Armageddon game. Yeah. And he go toe to toe with Shao Kahn, and Shao Kahn brutally, uh, essentially beats him to death. Uh, he sends a mental note back to his previous self, and that's how the reboot begins. But tell me, how do you mentally prepare yourself for a role where it's opening up with your character death? Well, you know. <laughs> I have a history of playing a lot of guys that get killed. I, I think they say, this guy dies, let's get Epcar, you know? So, uh, <laughs> uh, it's just kind of a funny thing. Uh, I always I always seem to play these characters. But, you know, um, I think a lot of people don't realize that, uh, that a lot of these games in particular are top secret, and, and we generally don't get to see the scripts until we go into the booth. So okay. we basically have to go in there and... Uh, 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 cold read a performance, uh, and you know there's a there's a, a style to that I guess, and uh, you know uh, I've been doing this a long time, so you know I'm, I'm able to do that fairly easily. And uh, mm-hmm. but it, for some for some actors, and you know even celebrities or TV and film actors, that, that is kind of a, a daunting proposition to do that to just jump in there and, and give a performance. A lot of them can't do that without some sort of uh, preparation or rehearsal or you know we just don't get that luxury unfortunately so whatever they throw at me i basically have to jump in and do so uh you know whatever the script says that's that's where we're going and uh you know and i i honestly i really enjoy working like that it's really kind of a fun fun thing it's just kind of like jumping on a roller coaster and holding on for your for dear life you know? <laughs> i've had a couple of voice actors on the show over the years um I uh, say the voice of Lara Croft, voice of Tails, a couple of uh, uh, brilliant, brilliant people. And they express how they don't get to see the character or they don't get to see the um, see the environment that the character is in while recording. I had no idea that you would have no access to the script prior to this, though. Yeah, generally that's the rule. I mean, sometimes you do. I mean, listen, there's, there's uh, you know, things that happen that are not, you know, that are different than what normally happens. But I mean, there's, there are times you get the scripts very, very rare though, uh, when that happens. And, uh, like I say, everything is so top secret now. They don't want us talking about anything. So, uh, you know, you have to be so careful about what you say or do and 
<laughs> you know, so they, they're not about to send out the scripts generally, and they just kind of want you to, to show up and, and do the work. So that's what we do. Yeah. That's a tough day's work, man. That's a tough day's work. I, uh, I tip the hat. Yeah. You know. Um, well, let's talk about our reading fighting style. Um, and mostly for uh, Carlos on this one, but feel free to drop on in as well, Richard. And really, yeah. in the PS2 days, the, the um, characters in Mortal Kombat, you can flick through different fighting styles on the fly. Um, we learned that Raiden uses uh, Jujutsu, he uses, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, uh, Nonchon, and um, I'm wondering, are these, well, it, why these particular fighting styles were chosen for Raiden? I think that was more of a combat design uh, balancing act that we had more or less because we had pretty much you know 24 25 characters in the deadly lion stays mm -hmm. so i i was on the combat um design team myself nigel uh nigel bruce nigel and uh paulo garcia which is the the game balancer and you know lead game designer right now uh, i'm not there anymore i'm retired but i could speak to to that group more or less uh we we had to come up with three different styles and i felt that you know i, I knew southern style which is nantron that's that's uh, a chinese southern style mm -hmm. and at the time i was learning that so i figured well let's throw that in with raiden and uh it seemed to work out because you know he, he has somewhat of those movements He's, you know, I'm a little bit too tall for that style, but, you know, I'm able to adapt when you're in the studio. You know, it's it's obviously different, just like how Richard said, sometimes you have to adapt and overcome when you're, uh, when you're, you know, there to design something for uh, an outside, you know, intellectual property. So that and jujitsu was more or less, that was like uh, Nigel was into Aikido, so... I had him there to help me out with some jujitsu moves. I know they're two different styles, but they kind of branch from the same like foundation to an extent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I figure, hey, mix that in, kind of do a little like nod to, you know, some of the grappling guys. How many how many different uh, styles do you know, Carlos? Well, I, I basically just study mainly Chinese styles. So I, I would say at least... And when I and this is loosely, I don't want to say I'm an expert because you know it's when you know a lot of styles, you're kind of not an expert in all of them. But in the Chinese styles, if you learn the and and they call them roads, and I forget the Chinese name for it, but it's like a kata. You learn the uh, the first, the third, and the fifth, and you'll probably know every movement that each style has. So I. I I'd say like a, at least 40, but you know, that's, wow. You know, wow. I, oh my. And I, that's, that's not, a, that's incredible. <laughs> once again, thank you. It's, 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 it's like anything you put your mind to it. You, you'll learn a lot, you know, and, and, and Richard, I know you're, you, you're, it's putting it this way. Like how many characters are you able to, voice and distinctly distinguish each one and define each one differently it's almost the same thing yeah but if i had to get in a fight my characters wouldn't help me at all so yeah <laughs> <laughs> now, guys you're both familiar with each other's versions of reading um yes. is there anything that the other guest had brought to the table regarding writing that you kind of uh, would have liked to debut um, well, you know, I, I'm the voice of Raiden, but uh, Carlos certainly is, you know, he embodies uh, Raiden and he, he became that character. And so, I mean, that's really what I'm, uh, a lot of that is what I'm drawing on when I go in the studio, mm -hmm. you know, that image of him as Raiden. So, uh, you know, he's really created uh, an incredible character. And, uh, you know, I, I just heard that you, you just told me on this session that you retired. I'm sad, I'm sad to hear that, Carlos. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but sometimes you just, uh, you know, I've been doing it for 27 plus years. I yeah. think it's time to move on to something else. Horse, horses, maybe, you know. Yes, exactly. 
Where is, yeah, where is and, your horse ranch, if you don't mind, mind me asking? Oh, absolutely not. I'm in uh, Illinois, in northern Illinois. I'm in a, a town called Harvard, and that is uh, about a half hour east of Rockford, Illinois, and like north westish of Chicago, about 62 miles. And are you a Chicago guy? Have you been, uh, did you grow up in Chicago or did you grow up in other parts of Illinois? No, I grew up in Chicago, was a Southside City boy and, uh, you know, wanted to do the whole, I want to live downtown, live on Lakeshore Drive. And then after, you know, I'd say like when I was 40, I was done with the city and wanted to move out to the country. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. It sounds like you you got a, a nice life out there with your horses. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like to think so. It's not for everybody, you know, waking up at 530 and hauling manure and chicken <laughs> shit, you know. But <laughs> you had me at manure. No, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and Richard, what, what and I don't want to, you know, because it's very delicate with the voice actors. What area are you in more or less? I'm in Los Angeles. I, you know, oh, okay. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and I've been that, here. That temperature is constant. Well, we've been having nothing but rain lately, which is kind of crazy. Uh, we're mm. not used to it, but we're we're happy about that because uh, uh, we've had years of drought. So uh, you know, this all this rain has been a good thing, except everything's flooding all over the place. But you know, it's good. We we love it. What oh, about you, Owen? Where are you from? Where are you living? Uh, I am living in a small town on the east of Ireland called Drogheda, which is uh, actually where I live, uh, grew up. But I spent most of my adult years on the West End in Galway City, which is uh, why uh, the show here is known as The Galway Gamer. Um, I only moved back to Drogheda about a year ago, so still a Galway man at heart, you know? Okay. That's mm-hmm. a lot. Well, I think that uh, you should get in touch with a, a convention in Ireland and have Carlos and I come out and do like a whole raid. Oh, absolutely. Panel. I think that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'll I make think it that happen. Be... Raiden Con, let's do it. Raiden Con. <laughs> <laughs> think of the hats we could sell. Oh, yeah. Make billions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, again, you're coming from very different sides of Raiden, so... I'd like to ask, what, who is Raiden to you? Why don't we start with the original, Carlos? You go ahead. Well, Raiden to me was the uh, the protector of the Earth realm, and uh, you know, it was I, I I would like to put it as when Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon was teaching his young student before he went off into the tournament. He was mm-hmm. kind of like this philosophical. Uh, you know, master fighter, you know, and once again, you know, it, it's a, it's, it's John Tobias's character. He defined it. He defined what he wanted more or less Raiden to be like this, uh, you know, quiet God, but more or less, you know, um, very stern and direct when he wanted to do something or wanted his, you know, his chosen, whatever his chosen, uh his chosen hero which would have been Liu Kang or mm-hmm. year later on whoever he chose you know he was very like a guiding father a little bit and uh to tell you the truth I think when when Richard started doing the voice I, I think that made that actually made Raiden more complete you know oh, thank we need yeah we, we absolutely needed a a distinct uh resounding voice you know, to follow that character, you know, and that, and and Richard has that embodiment of that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, uh, I love Raiden. He's, he's probably my favorite character that I do. And, uh, Oh, wow. He, uh, he, the thing that I love about him is that he's just a very honorable, noble, decent person. And uh, he, he is very much like a father. I think that's a really good way to put it. He is kind mm-hmm. of the father to them, and he is the protector of Earth Realm. And he takes his stuff very seriously. He uh, he can be stern, and he can be he can be tough. But I think he really has a really good heart, and uh, he always wants the best for everybody, and he wants everybody to do well. And 
I just I love that aspect of him. I you know I I played a lot of villains, <laughs> and uh, and and I, it was just such a, uh, a breath of fresh air to play Raiden because he was just so noble and so honorable, and uh, I just I really I really uh, there's something about him that really uh, clicks with me. And uh, I just, I, 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 he, he is, uh, he, like I say, I just really enjoy playing him, and uh, he, he's a wonderful, wonderful character. That's awesome, awesome. Um, he does come across most of the time as, as you said, very honourable, very noble. Of course, he's huge and intimidating as well. He's a very, very uh, large presence every time he's on the screen. And, of course, the voice adds to that as well. The deep voice kind of, again, kind of, demand respect when he speaks you know um but he can also be very very hot-headed and we have seen him in two different timelines (laughs) over the years become kind of what's known as dark rating so yes i kind of like dark rating actually (laughs) yeah he's pretty neat i like dark rain because he just you know, Raiden was always trying to be the good guy and give everybody the benefit of the doubt when he became dark rain he said that's it you know, no more. Toasty. I'm going to, you know, you guys are going to come at us. We're going to come at you and we're just going to, we're not going to stop until you guys are decimated. And I just, I kind of like that about him because it was just like, he was like, take no crap from anybody at that point, you know? Oh, I, I, don't get me wrong. I love it. I do love that right now. I love how uh, relentless he is. Um, but it, it raises the question that can Raiden as a character be trusted? I think he can. I mean, I, I believe he can. I, I think he is very trustworthy. And I think that if he if he makes you a promise or if he if he says he'll be somewhere, I mean, he's going to do all that. I, I believe he's he's uh, pretty honest about uh, what he says and does for the most part. What do and you think? to add to that, I, I think Richard's correct. You know, he's one of those. He's very uh, trustworthy and also. You know, when he's pushed to that edge and that limit, and just like anybody else, he's just going to lose his top. You know, we're we're all we all have our faults, and maybe that's one of his, and that's great to show off within a character. You know, you want you want your characters to be close as human as possible, and not mm-hmm. too much angelic or or too divine, or you know, like a, a, a you know, like Odin or any type of of deity. You want uh, a, a little human aspect in 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 most of the characters, and that's that's what makes him uh, appreciated and and, and kind of you know a loving character inside the combat community. Yeah, and and listen, everybody. I mean, if you're going to make a character human, we all have flaws and we all screw up here and there, and and Raiden's no exception, even though he is you know partially a god, but. Uh, you know, he, he gets frustrated and he gets angry and he does, you know, like anybody, you know, uh, has his has his flaws. Uh, but I think for for the most part, he is uh, genuinely a, a good uh, person, a good, uh, mm-hmm. you know, noble uh, character. You mentioned that um, he uh, he does have those human elements. He does at the end of Mortal Kombat 11 quite literally become human. He becomes mortal. Um, yeah. I, considering you guys have been in the shoes of Raiden, this godly figure for so long, how did you feel about him becoming immortal? I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I hated it. It's like, it's like taking Superman's powers away from him, you know, and what, you know, that he's, yeah, he's basically no longer Superman. He's just some mm-hmm. schlub, you know, walking around. So, uh, I, I didn't care for that, but, you know, I, I don't write the scripts. <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself, Carlos? What was your, um, what was your feeling when you saw Raiden as a mortal man? Well, once again, this is just my opinion. I, I agree with Richard. You know, he, it's a, you have this godly status figure and then, you know, maybe it's kind of like the fall of Eden. You know, something had happened and he he just had to become human, you know, within the storyline, you know, Mm -hmm. which we see now with the MK1 and maybe they're going to build upon that even more. So, you know, and return him to the godly status or, you know, just like he's like Richard said, just keep him as a schlub. (laughs) (laughs) Right in the schlub. Exactly. (laughs) 
can just see like opening a hot dog stand somewhere, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you want mustard? Or what do you want? You want a drink? <laughs> Chips? And no what fries, would the, uh, the fan reaction to him becoming mortal? Um, did fans uh, share your um, your view on it? Did they think it shouldn't have happened, or did they get heavy behind it? I, I don't know. I mean, for my end, I don't really know. I mean, uh, all the the only the only feedback I got from fans basically was that they really like Dark Raiden and they wanted to see more of that part mm-hmm. of Raiden that they kind of enjoyed when he just said, you know, that's it and went, you know, went batshit and started you know, <laughs> exactly. people's heads off and all that kind of stuff, which you know, they, they seem to like that a lot for some reason. But, uh, uh, and I thought, I thought they could have uh, stayed with Dark Raiden a little longer. But, I think uh, that would have been awesome. You know, that whole, that, that juxtaposition of, you know, you know, because he's always in that white suit, and then when he went dark, he had that, you know, um, I, I think it was from Tai Chi Master that we borrowed that suit from. You know, it's all dark, and it has the studs on it. It's just a great contrast. Yeah, that was a great, great costume, too. It looks amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I also want to, I want I want to give a, you know, a, whatever it is you call it when you give a throw out to the 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 people that design those characters have done a phenomenal yes. job over the years. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you watch the games as they progress, I mean, every game, it gets better and better and better. And they look more real and more. It, it's just phenomenal to me. The animation is incredible. And they, the, the uh, NetherRealm does an amazing, amazing job on those characters. They really do. Yeah, absolutely. They got a lot of talented people. And, uh, you know, that's I loved working there. Yeah, and because we had so many talented people, and they got talented people such as yourself to, oh, you know, you. do work with us, and it's just and, it, and it's a great well. collaboration. Well, thank you. Just to finish up, then, lads, one more question, uh, just for what we call in Ireland a bit of crack, um, and that is one of the main standpoints throughout the history of MK has always been the finishing moves. In your personal opinions. What are Raiden's best fatalities? When he wins. Exactly. <laughs> when he wins. <laughs> you know, you never know with those things. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's all fun to watch this stuff. I, honestly, personally, for me, it's it's more gratifying. Uh, you know, the scenes with the characters and uh, uh, when there's when there's things. I, I love the vignettes they have. They have some really lovely vignettes yeah. where they, you know, they just go in there. Like with uh, Bo Raicho, he's talking to him at the the ginseng uh, thing, and they're they're having a discussion about that. Or he's talking to one of the other characters who's who's gay, and he's feeling bad about it. And Raiden's having a heart to heart with him about that. And I just I just think that those moments are really, to me as an actor, are, are really interesting, and I love playing those scenes to me that's really the fighting is you know it's all kind of you know the fighting looks amazing and but it's uh uh you know i'm just basically yelling uh you know stuff where am i hitting or getting hit uh whereas with the other stuff i'm really you know ensconced in a scene and uh, there's something going on there so for me i really prefer the scenes I don't know that doesn't answer your question at all. (laughs) That's cool, though. That's cool. Um, And just while we're talking about the uh, the sound of hitting and getting hit and stuff like that, uh, we mentioned earlier on the sound that Raiden yells out when he's flying across the screen uh, that we got the history of there. Um, What does that say on the script, man? Well, I can't, I can't, I can't tell anybody that. that that's a. I promised Dan Forden and Ed that you know I'd never tell anybody. <laughs> so it, it, it's up to them to, you know, I don't want to break a promise. So it's up to them if they want to, you know, once they disseminate it to the world, then I can say yes or no or hey, this is what you told me or, you know, it, it's up to them. That's very Raiden of you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this has been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's been a real treat having you both on the show today. It really, really has been. Um, I, I just want to say it's been a real treat for me, uh, and particularly because I, I got to meet Carlos, and uh, I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Uh, I was kind of hoping we'd run into each other at a convention at some point, but uh, that has not happened. Uh, that's why I'm 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 putting the the onus on Owen to get us into a convention. <laughs> 
in Ireland. Awesome. So we can both, both fly out to Ireland and do a convention. But uh, no, it's been a real treat for me, Carlos, uh, and it's a real pleasure to meet you. And I have nothing but respect for you. And uh, you know, your your work has been phenomenal uh, throughout the Mortal Kombat universe, and uh, has made such an impact on on me and everyone else who plays the games and watches the games. And so, so thank you for all your hard work. And and uh, I just you know, it's it's an honor to meet you. Richard, thank you. I, I have nothing but the same respect for you. It's uh. It's amazing just the work you've done. You you have such a big catalog of like voiceover work and voice work, and uh, hope I'm hoping one day we we do a convention together and we can sit down and have dinner and just chit chat or just that. catch up. I yeah, and it's, it's it's one of those things where you hear somebody for you know close to six weeks out of the year. You know, every time we do a new game, you're 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 featured in it, and it's uh it's always amazing hearing your work and and you always bring that one hundred percent top level triple A voice work to 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 that storyline whenever we do MK or DC, and I'm always amazed that you you know you did the Joker, and just the contrast. You know, of work from Raiden to Joker is just wow. just amazing. It always astonishes me. You know, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very, very much. Uh, it, it really got me in the heart today. It really has. This has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, both having you in the show and chatting with you and watching you guys get to know each other has just been incredible. There is um, there's a line from the old Mortal Kombat movie actually. Uh, I just happen to be a reading line, um, but it's back when Christopher Lombard played him, and it said that Mortal Kombat is not about debt, but about life, and that's all I can think right now watching you guys, so that's absolutely fantastic. So, guys, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. No, thank you, and God bless. Yeah, God bless, and thanks, Carlos. Nice meeting you again. Hey, thank you, Richard. Same, it's been an honor. 101.3 Flirt FM